So a very last minute decision to go live with the beautiful Sarah Catherine for her interview. And so I thought it would be a really cool opportunity to go live with her instead of um, doing it via Zoom, which is how I've been operating a lot of these calls. So who is Sarah and why did I get Sarah on? Sarah's history, basically I've titled this session Sisterhood Cycles and Community. I'm just bringing her in now. But essentially Sarah helps women make sense of their menstrual cycle and to tune into their bodies. So she's a life coach, menstrual cycle advocate and plant medicine mama who loves a good glass of red wine and can often be found dancing in her kitchen, which totally just made me know we're probably soul sisters, let's be real. <laughs> oh, so welcome to the stage or the virtual stage, beautiful Sarah. So nice to have you in here. I've essentially just given you like a very brief um, introduction titling this session Sisterhood Cycles and Community. And I felt like after looking into the work that you do, that kind of just summed up everything um, in a little nutshell. So for someone who has the background in what you do, I'd kind of love to hear how you progress into finding the passion here or whether it's been a lifelong passion for you. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. It's nice to finally connect with you. I feel like we've gone back and forth for a little while. Totally. And you're all the way on the other side of the world, so it's kind of cool. And I've been enjoying following along and your podcast and everything. So I'm honored to, to be here. And you, you threw me a curveball jumping on Instagram. I thought, oh my God. Totally. My comfort zone. Okay. I know. <laughs> so. I just had this gut feeling today. I'm like, I just feel like mixing it up. And the fact that you agreed to it was like, oh, this girl rocks. I love it. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> well, on it, honestly, the timing, not to go off the topic too much but the timing couldn't be more perfect because I've literally been saying to myself I need to put myself out there a little bit more especially in the world of Instagram and then there you are right like hey Sarah let's do this let's live. <laughs> oh god like two minutes <laughs> anyway. before you're jumping on that's how we roll <laughs> yeah no doubt eh? all right good stuff. well I don't have a glass of wine I have a tea tonight but uh <laughs> no I'm really happy to be here and honored thank you and going back to your question yeah, I mean, in some ways, sometimes I sit back and think, well, how did I get here? How did I start talking about periods and essential oils and empowering women and kind of tuning back into their bodies and themselves? But when I really look back at it, it, it has. It's been an accumulation of years um, from, you know, all the pivotal, pivotal moments in my life that have kind of led me up until now. And there's been a few of those. Um, and you know, in some ways, it's only just kind of beginning. It's all just kind of coming together now in this really neat way where I'm all of a sudden able to say, yeah, okay, all those years of talking with women and, you know, in my corporate roles and in, in on the side in my, you know, private practice with coaching and things like that, all of a sudden it's like, wow, okay, this is all kind of coming together for me in regards to the menstrual cycle awareness stuff. So it's, it's been pretty cool and I, I don't teach anything that I don't practice myself. So it's all from personal experience. Right. right. Um, so I think that's really important. So it was my own journey that I went along and then started talking to friends and then that turned into talking to more people. And now here I am talking to you all the way over in Australia. Yes. Girl, yeah. it's such a, um, I feel like it's such a process with, with all of, um, women hormones and the menstrual cycle because it's something that I know that when I was growing up it was a little bit taboo it was like things would be left on my bed and I'd kind of just be like oh okay like I'll I'll figure that out no I, I think I've heard about this and it's like but there was no real open discussion about hey like women's hormones do change at different times and these are the sorts of practices that you can do to soothe yourself and like then moving into later on, moving into the practices of like Ayurveda and, and looking up different research, it's like PMS isn't actually meant to be a thing. When you get PMS or when you're in pain, it's like 
this is your body's way of telling you that there's imbalances and there's toxicities because it really should just be flowing um, pain-free. So I would love to hear your, your take on that because I know that pretty much any lady that I talk to either gets bloating or period pain or PMS and um, yeah, just love your perspective on that. For sure. And yeah, I mean, I think you touch on something there too, is that taboo, right? One of the things that I've done in a couple of workshops that I've done is in the beginning, we all start talking and I open up the, the conversation to say, share some of your experiences with your period and your mm -hmm. menstrual cycle. So what was it like for you in the beginning? And I'd ask anybody watching that to, to go back to that time in your life when you first got your period and what words kind of come up for you. And time and time again in these workshops, that I've done, you know, women come up with similar, very similar words, you know, kind of secretive, yeah. ashamed, um, you know, and even if we don't realize it, there is something about that story that we have been told for so many generations that's deeply ingrained in us, right? Yeah. And so part of what I do is try to change that story and that relationship is to feel empowered by your hormones in your period versus disempowered, right? Because mm man, we've got this crazy awesome advantage of ways. Um, we're pretty freaking magical, right? Yes. So trying to tune back into your cycle and why we feel certain ways and why we operate certain ways is super, super empowering. So I think that taboo thing is kind of the start of it, is, right? Talking about that and realize, really taking a moment to realize what your relationship with your cycle is because not a lot of women have stopped to think about that, right? And even myself, um, you know, my background, I, I kind of laughed. At, I mean, my mom was a labor and delivery nurse for like 30 years. My background <laughs> is health science. I've had three kids. And yet five years ago, I went on this journey of looking into this more. I was blown away at what I didn't know. I thought, oh my God, I should know more about this. I can't believe. But it's that practical day-to-day -day stuff that we are kind of missing. We weren't taught that most of us, not all of us, but mm -hmm. most of us weren't taught that in sex ed class or at school or by our mothers. We just, it wasn't something we really talked about. So that's something I'm really passionate about is just starting to have that conversation and make it more of a regular conversation and kind of break down that taboo. So absolutely, that, that's one piece of it. Um, and then you mentioned something about, you know, our, our menstrual cycles and how we feel and, and pain or no pain or bloating. I think, like you said, our, our cycle is such a phenomenal feedback system. Mm -hmm. You know, for the most part, that's a big, you know, that's how I look at it. It's a feedback system. And so the more you can kind of tune into it, and not just your period, and not just ovulation, but the whole cycle, right. the more feedback you can get about your body, right? So yeah, I absolutely agree with that. That's so cool. I love the way that you speak. Actually, I'm just like, can we do lives every day and talk about this? Because I'm, <laughs> I'm sure you get it with the ladies that come in, because I guess when I started looking into it, it was like, now, every time I get my period and sorry for the people watching, actually, no, I'm not even sorry, whatever. Um, it's just like, it's actually exciting because I went through a period of having, a, excuse the pun, I went through a period of having no period for like two years and, yeah. and that was, you know, due to severe weight loss. And now like every time that it comes through, I take it as like this little blessing that my body is working that the way it was meant to. And so I'd be curious to see how you kind of honor your own cycle, but how you help empower other women to honor their own cycle and see it as like an exciting thing because there's so many women, you know, who have cycles all over the place and that can lead to so many health problems. If not one of the biggest problems would be, having kids for many, I, I think. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you do hear more and more about that, right? Like fertility 
issues and, and various issues um, in that regard. And, and yeah, it's, it's a huge indicator of your overall health. And I mean, hormones, if, you know, we could be on here for hours. We <laughs> went down that road, but hormones, I mean, they impact everything. They mm. really do, right? And and they can be, hormones and your cycle can be complicated in many ways, but the way I teach it is I try to keep it really, really simple. And I often kind of joke, like, I nerd out around science and facts. Like, I, that's just my background. I like that stuff. But I've come, you too, yeah. I've come to learn over time that there's also that intuitive side and that magic. And that's really kind of where I like to educate from is where that, that kind of intersects. Uh, so, yeah, you mentioned how you know I help women honor their cycle I, I think one of the biggest things honestly is the first thing is awareness right like um there's so much that you know if you don't know what you don't know it's you know you can't do anything about it so I think awareness around our cycle and like I said not just our period or not our ovulation but around our full 30-day cycle and I often break that into four phases yeah. that mimic the season so that's how I kind of educate around that and I break it down really really simple four phases we touch really high level on hormones and I can walk through them quickly with you at some point if you want on this um, and that is the first piece because once you're kind of aware of it then all of a sudden I think especially people for us women we sometimes can be really hard on ourselves if we're not staying consistent with something or we fall off the wagon with our diet or our exercise or our, you get up at 5 a.m. and I see you getting up, girl, and that with your awesome morning routine, <laughs> right? But we sometimes fall, you know, if we fall off the wagon, it can make hard on our and why we feel a certain way during a certain time. So just being aware of, oh, this is why I feel this way. Mm. You know, as women, we're not meant to live in this linear fashion we're not meant to be crammed into these 24-hour days and live our life that way we are cyclic and and that's once you can kind of understand that it's that just that in and of itself is a huge thing just the awareness piece and then I kind of break it down like once you're aware then you can start to accept and soften and soften into it mm -hmm. and those practices and maybe look at charting or tracking your cycle and then you can start to put it into action a little bit where you actually start to live your life making certain decisions based on what you know about your body and where you are in your cycle, in your business, in your relationships, in your parenting. I mean, the list goes on and on. I think of so things that so much. That, that totally did. <laughs> I and I, tangents, Lauren. No, I, I do as well, but everything you're saying is making sense and I think just to recap that for people when they're listening to it, I tend to think of things in threes. So when I heard you speaking, it was like the biggest thing was like awareness, then acceptance and then action. And I just love that practical approach because I'm, I think we're probably quite similar in the way that we approach a lot of stuff. I have a background in the sciences as well and like in the medical field, but then always had a passion for that intuitive feminine side. And like, I just want to work with, like babies and that's like I don't even think I want them but I just find the body and the like the woman's body I guess quite fascinating um and it's and it's not even that I don't find men interesting it's that you become kind of so curious in like all of your own things that go on with yourself and like all of the stages that you go through in life and it's like oh my gosh it's just so um beautifully diverse so I would love if you could go into the four seasons or the way that you break that down whether you know you do that super briefly or whether you go into it um a little bit more in detail I'll leave that in your court sure no I would love to this is uh this is my favorite topic so <laughs> absolutely so yeah typically I break it down and I will try to keep it somewhat high level and then feel free to interrupt with any questions or anything um or if anybody has yeah if anybody throughout now exactly. that we're live, uh, yeah go ahead and ask and I'll do my best to answer um but yeah I like to break it down into four seasons that mimic the seasons right and there it, it's an easy way to remember but there's also something so poetic about it in a sense like that connection I think we have as women to to mother nature and to the earth um, and to the moon cycles right it's all kind of interconnected 
Um, so I break it down into winter, spring, summer, and fall. Mm -hmm. And that is how a lot of people that educate around this do, do break that down into those phases. And so we'll start with winter. Winter is basically day one of your cycle. This is when you get your period. And it's not the spotting beforehand or anything along those lines. It's that full-blown and all its glory. Day one of your period, that is when day one of your winter phase begins. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I will just mention if you are not um, getting a period uh, for whatever reason, you can also tap into where the moon cycles are. That's a really great reference point. Um, so your winter phase is very similar energy to the new moon. Um, space okay so then in winter really it's very inward energy for us we spend half our cycle with very inward en energy and half our cycle with very outward so the winter phase is very inward it's a really amazing time to release and reset so there is something just really magical about every month we get the ability to release whatever's not working for us and reset and put forward our intentions around how we want the next 30 days to go. And we're physically releasing at the same time. So that's pretty cool. Our intuition is really high during this time. So your left and right hemisphere in your brain are actually um, talking more mm -hmm. and they're more connected in a sense. So intuition is, is really high. So this is a really good time to, you know, to journal, to go inward, to write down, you know, dream big, uh, whether that's business or relationships or your own personal life, um, a really good time to, to journal and just ask yourself those questions. What do I want moving forward? What do I want to let go? And it is to take a couple days to slow down. Mm. We tend to think, I don't know, we live in a society where we tend to think not doing means we're not productive. Yeah. But this can be a really, really productive time with going inward and self-discovery. Um, and if you honor that time, you will find that the rest of your cycle will go much more smoothly in a sense. Your other seasons will, will flow more smoothly when you've honored your winter properly and you've taken some time to rest and relax. Can I just jump so in there as well? I um I love that you are also in tune that it's the new moon time because I have found information you know around it being the full moon time and you know it's this big thing of like oh full moon letting go and releasing it's like actually it's the new moon time so the new moon for people who don't know is when the moon is not visible in the sky and I think of that as like when you're planting the seed in the ground and it's almost like somebody having a child where it's not what you see on the outside, but it's this nourishing and this nurturing. And around the new moon time, I always feel like I go into like songwriting mode and I like smash out all of like these songs, but it's the, I think it's the other side of like the, the cooling practices and like actually allowing yourself to rest because I know that I also have a very competitive energy and a very driven energy. And so you know, there's that mental chatter that's like, you should be getting up and doing this. You should be doing that where it's like, actually, no, Sarah told me to rest <laughs> and like the moon. I, <laughs> I'm going to use you as a reference, but I think we do need to give ourselves permission. And sometimes when someone else gives us that, it's like, oh, like it's actually okay to not want to do a physical practice. It'll not be super active or super chatty it's like you can just kind of cocoon yourself at this time like I love that it's winter time I haven't really framed it in terms of the seasons before so I'm yeah keep going I'm loving this <laughs> no that's awesome and I thank you for saying that and, and yeah with the, the reference to the moon you're absolutely right um and it is it and it does it gives you a little bit of permission and if you need to take that permission from me in the beginning great um, but as you do it you'll start to realize that it, it's actually going to benefit you in the sense that you are going to maximize your productivity and things and your efficiency and things like that so much better mm. if you just give yourself a day or two to really have that time and to honor that time it makes a huge huge difference so yeah. um 
Yeah, okay, so let's jump into the next phase then and, and feel free to continue to, to comment. But the next phase is then moving into your spring phase. And this is considered your, I always mix this up, your waxing moon, right? Mm -hmm. So like you said, new moon is, you don't see it in the sky. Then you start to see that little sliver come in. Um, so this is your waxing moon. And the spring, just to give you a sense, I didn't really talk about days because everybody's going to differ a little bit, but your winter is typically about day one to day six or seven. Very loose ballpark, right? And this is the power of tracking it for yourself because you're going to get a sense of where you land in this. Then your spring is going to come in around when your period ends, in and around day seven to about day 14. Again, give or take. Mine, mine's a little earlier than that. So um, just to give you a little bit of a reference point for those that like to have those. And spring is very much like the season, right? It's kind of like you were saying, like you, you imagine this blossoming. It is mm -hmm. it's this blossoming where you're going from this inward energy to this outward energy. Um, but it's not like gung ho. Mm -hmm. This is a caution for a lot of people because if you're like me, and kind of like you were saying, Lauren, you're somebody that's competitive, you're go, 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 you typically probably have a lot of energy. I find this can be a challenge for me at times because I'll be like, oh, spring, I'm ready to go. <laughs> and I burn myself out pretty quickly doing that. So spring is meant to be this gentle reawakening, mm. blossoming. It's a really cool time to get a lot of the detail work done. So if, or not, not necessarily detail work, I should say, it's a really great time to start planning. So it's a mm. great time if you start your dreaming in your winter phase, your spring phase is when you're actually going to put pen to paper, put a plan down, make your to-do list, call some friends, book some social activities in because of well, when we're allowed to, depending where you live in the world. Exactly. Um, and then, you know, when your summer hits, which will be your next phase, you're going to be set into a really good flow and momentum to be super uh, what else will do for spring? I think, again, spring is a great time to, to make decisions. Mm -hmm. It's a great time from a business standpoint to launch new ideas. Um, so, again, it's kind of that relation, that idea of, you know, coming back out to the world, that blossoming, um, to try new things, things along those lines. So that's your spring. Yep. Do you have any questions about that? I had a question in regards to like just very simply where are the levels of like estrogen and progesterone and testosterone here? Yeah, thank you. Sorry, I typically mentioned that and I kind of forgot. So I typically touch on three main hormones. I say, okay, there's three star players here. <laughs> there's your um, estrogen your progesterone, and your testosterone, which you just mentioned. Yeah. There's obviously a lot of other things that can um, be at play, but those are kind of your main star hormones. And I like to name them so I remember. Um, estrogen is kind of like your Beyonce hormone, <laughs> right? So she's like full out, fierce, like sexy, confident. That's yeah. your Beyonce hormone. I love it. Um, your testosterone, somebody was helping me, I asked somebody in a workshop a little while ago, I said, I need a name for testosterone, I, I can't figure it out, and um, somebody said, Samantha from Sex in the City, oh my so gosh, Sex in the City fan, any Sex in the City fan there, so I was like, yes, that's it, it's Samantha from Sex in the City, okay, that's the testosterone, so your testosterone, and I'll talk about where they kind of show up, Yeah. but that's your kind of competitive, your sex drive is going at that point, yeah. Um, you're usually a bit more of a risk taker, right? And then your progesterone is kind of like your chill pill. Mm. I still need help naming that. Like I'm trying to think of somebody, but that's your that's your chill pill. That's how I think of that hormone. And that shows up later on um, after your ovulation. So basically at your winter phase, where we just talked about during your period, your hormones are kind of at rock bottom there. And that is why you want to go inward, right? So hormonally, there's a reason for this. Um, and it's why you feel like you need to rest a little bit more. It's why you feel like you need to consume a little bit more from a calorie standpoint. Um, so that's a big reason why, because your hormones are kind of at zero there. Then as you move into spring, which we were just talking about, they slowly begin to climb, specifically your estrogen 
and your testosterone. Mm -hmm. uh, well, mo mostly your estrogen in the spring. So your estrogen is kind of climbing, and that's why you need to kind of gently go out back out to the world because it's kind of like Beyonce and it's Destiny's Child days. She's not like full out yet, but in the spring she's like, yeah, I'm getting there. Okay. <laughs> so, and then once you hit ovulation, which is your summer phase, which is what we'll talk about right now, that's kind of the, the peak where your um, estrogen peaks and then your testosterone peaks right there as well. Right. Um, and then after the summer phase, you'll hit the fall phase, which we'll talk about as well in a minute. And both your estrogen and your testosterone kind of take a, a nosedive, like full jump off a cliff nosedive, which is often why fall can be a tough time for a lot of us. Mm -hmm. And that's when your progesterone kicks in. So thank you for asking that. Because normally I, I mention that as I leave throughout the, the seasons. Um, but yeah, I can continue to go through the phases. And if you have any questions, let me know. I just came up with the name though for the progesterone for like mega chill pill and I feel like you've probably seen Grace and Frankie. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's totally That's her. so good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I knew it would come at the right time for the right person. Totally. So good. The right now. Oh, love that character. Yes. I love She's her awesome. so much. I'm like, Thank I'm you. going to grow up to be like Frankie. She is the best. <laughs> I know. She's so awesome. Oh, my gosh. I wish one of my friends was. Well, I see a couple of you guys. Frankie, hey. hey. So like, oh, my God, yes. Perfect. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the summer. So, once we move into the summer, this is where estrogen is slowly climbing that, that peak, that main event, which is ovulation, right? Mm -hmm. So, the one thing that when we talk about kind of biologically, the purpose of these hormones and the purpose of ovulation, whether we want that or not, is to procreate, right? Mm -hmm. So the reason as your estrogen starts to peak, you're going to feel like you have more outward energy. You're going to feel more social. You're going to feel like connecting with people. If your test testosterone kicks in, you're going to have a higher sex drive. And ultimately, it is for the purpose of trying to procreate. These hormones mm. want to get you out and get you laid, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> Even if you don't want that, right? <laughs> yeah. So that's something to keep in, in the back of your mind when you're kind of starting to feel that surge of estrogen. But it's a really great time to, yeah, to socialize, to connect with people, to have a date night with your hubby or your partner. Mm -hmm. It's a phenomenal time um, to prospect in business to present It'd be a great time to do something like this yeah I'm not in my summer phase but <laughs> it is a great time to do something like this right because studies have actually shown that people are they're they're physically and emotionally more attracted to you during that time mm. um, which is, is kind of cool as well and people can you can communicate better but people can actually hear you better during yeah. that time as well um, so that can be a really powerful time that you can work that to your advantage, especially like, you know, as a, as a business owner, mm. uh, but also in any of your relationships, right? Totally. So and voices change with hormones, don't they? Like the actual tone of your voice can change. I've heard that. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Like I, your, your smell that you don't, you might, I mean, for some maybe they do notice, but just that, that smell that energy you put out there mm. there was a study done a while back on waitresses while they're ovulating get higher tips oh um, what and yeah so it's That's really interesting crazy. Right? the way we're kind of built this, this biologically um and it, and it starts to make sense right we and the one thing i would say about this time is this is the time if we're going to feel like superwoman at any point in time mm. in our cycle, this is the time we're going to feel like I can do it all. The challenge and what I would caution you with during this time, twofold, one, we can often fall into that bucket of pouring into other people because we just have all this energy and we, I can do everything. Mm. Um, and then we end up kind of burning out or two, we tend to use this as a benchmark. Like, we tend to think, okay, I can do it all, I can do it all, I can do it all. And then all of a sudden fall hits and we're like, what 
what's wrong with me? Why, what, what's going on? And we use that summer as a benchmark. And that's dangerous too. And I see women, including myself, do this time and time again, where all of a sudden you're like, oh, I can't do everything, but I was able to do it all last week. Like what's mm-hmm. going on? And so just understanding kind of where you are at in your cycle can be so powerful, even just for your own self-compassion. Yeah. Um, so that's the one thing I would say about that in regards to your summer. And then, and summer is your full moon. Mm-hmm. So you talk about, you know, that full moon energy, very outward, a little bit manic sometimes. Mm-hmm. And, and that can be, this phase can be, if you haven't honored your previous phases, sometimes this phase can feel a little manic for some people. Yeah. Um, and all of that is an indicator. It's, if none of it is right or organizing it for yourself and then it being an indicator for maybe areas you need to work on areas you maybe need to let go of a little bit more and like we said like that feedback system right Mm, totally yeah and then you move into your fall and your fall is that last part of your cycle and your fall is typically in around that 21 to 28 days um, it is your waning moon, so we're starting to go from that outward energy, that full moon, back into that darkness, mm. right, that side of things, and so we do go much more inward, and from a hormonal standpoint, we just had that peak of that estrogen and that testosterone, like party girls, right, yeah. and then all of a sudden, they take a nosedive, and that is why a lot of us struggle with the fall phase, because we're all of a sudden, whoa, what happened, Yeah. right, yeah. Um, yeah, but the fall phase can also be really powerful because it's a time to, again, to go inward. It's a great time to assess. So kind of look back at your previous phases and, and assess the situation. This is a good time to finish off your to, to-do list, get into some of the more detailed work where you kind of have your head down and you're getting things finished. Um, it's a tough time for a lot of us for our inner critic. Mm-hmm. So the pro is kind of the rose colored glasses come off and you can really see the truth in a lot of things. So this is a really good time to, like I said, to assess situations and to kind of say, okay, where do I stand with this? Where do I want to go? Um, but at the same time, your inner critic can get pretty loud during this time. So that's something just to keep in the back of your mind yeah. when you're going through your fall phase. And that progesterone is where this is where this kicks in. And that hormone is essentially to help maintain a pregnancy again whether you want it or not that is kind of what that hormone is there for and so when that hormone spikes it it wants you to stay safe and cozy Mm -hmm. and it wants you to stay at home and be in front of the fireplace and have your cup of tea like Mm -hmm. that is kind of the vibe that's going on in your fall season so again it's, it's about honoring that and you know and listening to your body at that time because it is a really powerful, honest time. So I often talk to people about write down how you're feeling. Don't necessarily act on it, but then go back to it in your spring phase and have a look at what you kind of wrote down and then make some decisions in your spring phase. But again, it can be a really, really, really honest time. Um, It is often a time like progesterone, we are often craving more calories, our need for exercise and sleep all change in the fall phase. So this can also be a time where people tend to fall off that wagon a little bit. Yeah. Um, that quote unquote, right? It can be hard on themselves. So it's, again, it's important to know where you're at and why you're feeling a certain way. Um, and so that's, that's the fall phase. And then you loop back in. And this is often, I should just mention to you quickly, this is where you're going to have things like your PMS symptoms. Right. Um, and again, it's a big indicator. There's one or if we're really simplifying it, there's almost one or two things, right? Either um, you can go back and look at your phases and kind of see where where you can maybe honor them a little bit better, and yeah. you will just naturally start to see those PMS symptoms kind of diminish. Or there's something going on that you need to address, right? Yeah. Um, hormonally or through a healthcare pr- a practitioner or something along those lines. But yeah, so that's kind of the breakdown of the four phases. That just, oh, like, I realize how much I actually love all of this kind of stuff. And I just want to dive so deep 
into it because I love the moon so much. And I guess for other people watching or listening, <clears throat> but really for myself as well, is that my period tends to be like, I feel like I've said it's always been irregular. And the only time that I noticed it be really, really regular was when I was back living in Tasmania and I was really dedicated to being super, super in tune with the moon and also being super in tune with what I'm eating. So I guess, you know, for, for the education side of it, if you are a little bit all over the place or, you know, you skip periods or you don't have a good... Um, relationship with your body and your period there I don't know whether it would be uh, whether it would be something that you would recommend to kind of look at what the phases of the moon are doing and try to just um go like almost tune into okay this is this phase of that and while my period might be coming in the summertime of the moon try maybe just like try to set the intention for the rest of the year to just see if you can almost become in sync with the new moon because I get so excited when my period actually falls on the new moon and that's when I know that I can kick off to that beautiful cycle from the beginning at the right time naturally like externally but then internally so I don't know if you'd second that opinion I see a lot of nodding so I'm sure that's a, a yes <laughs> internal and external you mm. just said um, because I get sometimes that question about well, what should I pay attention to the moon or my period and mm. I'm like there's there's no one answer I mean pay attention to what you're drawn to the most in the beginning or what makes the most sense to you right yeah. and I kind of see the moon as a little bit more of an external benchmark where your menstrual cycle is maybe a little bit more of an internal benchmark yeah. however absolutely um being able to use the moon as a benchmark and for you know to kind of begin to track where you're at and how you're feeling is, is a great way to start like you know mm -hmm. i'll tell you the story that i started going down this road uh learning about my hormones it started with hormones started with learning natural ways i'm a huge essential oil lover mm -hmm. and started to you know go start from that perspective right i had a lot of people in my community asking me about how to balance their hormones naturally and things like that so i started down that road and then i started down this road of menstrual cycle awareness and tracking and charting my own cycle mm -hmm. and then i got pregnant with my third surprise baby oh. <laughs> and um <laughs> you know i was like oh wait a minute now i can't track my cycle <laughs> I was like, so I was so into it in the beginning, right? I, I mean, I still really am. It's such a natural part of what I do now. Yeah. But in the beginning, I was like obsessive about it, like <laughs> anything I do when I start. <laughs> and um, so I was like, what am I going to do? So that that's when I turned. And I have always been drawn to, I mean, the joke in my family is, you know, I'm the kitchen witch or the mixing up a potion of some sort. Yes. Amen, right? sister. I love it. And since I've been little. Right. So yeah. it's just the, uh, <laughs> but so I've always been drawn to it, but I guess I've never really had a practical use. Mm. I need to put my crystals out on the full moon. Yes. Or, you know, but, and so all of a sudden I was in this phase of my life where I wasn't menstruating, I was pregnant. And so that's where I started to tune into the moon. And that was really interesting as well. So mm. I don't, there's no right or wrong way to do it. I think the, the key is to understand that we're cyclic. We're not meant to live on this linear kind of line. And I'll share something with you in a second too that was a huge takeaway for me. But I think that's the main point is to recognize that and to begin to honor and understand how you feel throughout your cycle. Mm. And whether you use your menstrual cycle as a benchmark or the moon as a benchmark, um, it, it doesn't matter so much. It's just about figuring out where uh, where your connection is right yeah um and the one thing i, I was going to share with you quickly that was kind of the aha moment for me when i got into this was this was literally actually the thing i read that was like i need to know more tell me and immediately men, <laughs> i know tell me men um their hormonal landscape is spread out over a 24 hour period meaning they're, and they don't have a lot of dips and, and um, valleys in their hormones the way we do, but they do have some. And that's within a 24-hour period. So you can kind of picture these little dips and, and 
flows in this short, cramped period. Ours is spread out over a 30 day. So our dips and valleys is so much more spread out that as you can imagine, all of a sudden maybe a few minutes in a man's day could be a week in a woman's world in a sense, right? right? And so we're so different. And I mean, we know that, right? But we're so different in a lot of ways. And that's one way when I read that, I thought, that's interesting because we measure our success a lot of times. I, I mean, corporately, I, I work. I have a corporate day job, and I work with a lot of men, right? Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I see it. We measure our success on a 24-hour period. We measure it was a good day, it was a bad day. I got a lot done. I felt this way all through this 24-hour lens, and we're not broadening that lens to that 30 days, which we really should be. Mm. Um, and not measuring ourselves on the 24 hour cycle. And that, that was the moment for me that I was like, oh, wow, I've got to learn more about that. So again, I, I think that's kind of the key part of that awareness and whatever tool you use to kind of come to that. Um, yeah, you'll come to the same conclusion. I came across that information not too long ago as well. And it was literally mind blowing because I guess, like you were saying, we, we so heavily, you know, can compare ourselves to people or just have that drive. And it's like, it can be a a good sense of like wanting to be passionate and driven, but then remembering that I think the way I kind of remembered it was like every time a man wakes up, it's reset. Whereas it's like ours is just waiting to happen and it's coming. And it's like, and it, you know, I've previously seen that as a bad thing, whereas it's like, I'm feeling good. This isn't going to last, but, um, now it's more so like actually let's just ride that wave but in terms of like the resetting of the hormone cycle this is where I find it really hugely important for women to remember that you know men can work out every day they can get up and do this like hustle and you know it's really good for them when their testosterone peaks at the beginning of the day but for me I love practicing of a morning but that practice has to change over the course of the month. Sometimes it's just sitting or sometimes it's just lying. And these days I feel like my practice isn't overly physical because I'm so intense most of the other time that I actually really need to focus on like cooling the body down, which is psychologically more challenging than it is physically. Um, So yeah, I love that you brought up that a few minutes in a man's world could be a whole week in a woman's world and it's not that one's better or worse it's just respecting where each other's at and it's really honoring the masculine and the feminine not just man woman but the masculine and the feminine within yourself but if you have a partner um you know honoring that in them or asking them more about it so you can know what to do at certain times you can see the way that their energy is and it's like okay well you can make it playful. Like, are you in summer phase or something? Do you know what I mean? And it's not like, oh, are you on your period? <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? So, so <laughs> that, and that's so beautiful, like so beautifully said. Absolutely. And yeah, it, it, it is it's not good nor bad. It's just different. Yeah. And I think the beautiful part about it is, yeah, when you can start to honor like your morning routine, depending where you are in your phase and just honor that, Mm. Um, it, it can have a huge impact on on all areas of your life, right? Totally. Um, because you're gonna find that if you, but like, what am I? If you can play into your strengths when your strengths are at the best, and and then I mean that's that's ideal, right? Like that's true. We're talking like time management and productivity and efficiency and all those things that we want to go for um, in kind of our maybe business. Mm. Then those things are going to play out better if you're playing into your strengths. Like don't focus so much on the weakness part, right? And so, yeah, it's not necessarily a bad thing at all. It's pretty unique. It's pretty cool. Um, And then, yeah, talking to your partner, for sure. Um, I think, I mean, I have three kids, two boys, um, and then a husband. And they they know a lot about this topic. So <laughs> they absolutely they know probably more than most men do. Uh, but yeah, I mean, and we and we, you can make it playful. Like we joke. I mean, come on, think about it, guys. Like your woman is in their summer phase and she's channeling Samantha and Beyonce. Yes. Like, come <laughs> totally. on, get all over that. Like yes, that's fine, right? all the so, single ladies, so right? All the time about that. Like, that will be like. Are you in your fall phase or oh summer phase? Okay, I like 
feel like Paul <laughs> can be like one of his colleagues just popped on Instagram. He's gonna kill yes. me. <laughs> it's like the full <laughs> phase. It's like Netflix and chill, or like you know, it's like the summer phase is like we're going to the nightclub and we're we're doing it. We're going all out. We're having a few drinks and feeling a little bit wild. And it's just, <laughs> oh my God, I feel like this is gonna get so playful up in here. And I'm gonna. I'm actually going to look at the moon cycle and start to track some little playful things around that, which, which really excites me. And I also use um, essential oils, but it hasn't really been in practical application to um, the menstrual cycle as such or the moon cycle. So I'd love to hear what and how you use them. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Well, that could be a whole other topic. We could do another whole chat if you like, because I'm like, oh, I could just chat. To you. I feel like I could chat to you all day. It's so cool. I, I honestly, I just glanced at the time. I thought, oh, my God, that went by so fast. Oh, my God. Um, I, I know, right? <laughs> I, um, I'll get really high level, but I would love to come back anytime you have to, for sure. Cool. Uh, you know, I use essential oils for all sorts of things, but in relationship to what we've just been talking, I mean, there is a very practical, and then there's also from the emotional standpoint, um, I think they can be really powerful. There's also some oils that I love to tune into and tap into myself to help connect me back into my feminine energy. Because mm. again, like I said, in my corporate role, I, I work with a lot of men, and I tend to sometimes move into that energy really easily. Yeah. So I have to remind myself to go back. So I use oils for all those things. Um, I mean, some of my favorite oils for um, balancing my hormones, things like Clary Calm and Clary mm. Sage. There's some amazing feminine oils like your geranium and your lavender. Um, and I'll like, I, uh, so I just finished my, my period. So I was still really crampy today. Yeah. And so I will literally roll it on my abdomen, put it on my back. So I'll use it topically, aromatically, internally. I mean, there's so many different ways you can use it. And if you're struggling with your cycle, as far as it being a little erratic, and you're looking for ways to balance your hormones, there's a lot of really cool natural ways that you can try first right. before you maybe go and look or more and not just oil but oil being a part of it so mm. that's kind of high level I don't know if you have any specific questions about that Lauren no I I'm just I think I just want to know so much more like from where you've learned from as well and um I don't know how much time you have I, I could talk for a little bit longer but what's your what's your time schedule for today I've got a little bit more time I do okay. I did promise some tuck-ins kisses yeah. for bed I've been working in the evening a lot so yeah. but I've got a few more minutes for cool. sure we won't stay on too much longer but I would love to know um I think we might even do a whole other chat at some other point on the pill and like medications that people are taking that kind of throws that natural cycle and rhythm out and I'm all about rhythm and I'm all about you know the flow and and being in tune with it being natural even if you know it's not functioning perfect from the beginning it's like we actually need to clear all of the toxins out to come from like a clear basis when you're working with someone it's like anybody on medications we need the foundational level like where am I meeting you at with that um but that's a that's a whole other um yeah can of worms that we can open there but I would love to know where you where you learn from and who your teachers are in this field because i I'm really resonating with the way that you teach and the way that you speak. And I feel like I would, yeah, I would love to do either more with you or look into the teachers that you, um, you're a part of. Oh, well, thank you. And yeah, I, I would love, I mean, what you just touched on there is absolutely a whole nother topic that we can get into and, and removing toxins from our home is probably mm -hmm. how it, it is how I got started in the essential oil um, world is I had my you know my first two babies and all of a sudden you know I was living this and or like what I thought was defined as pretty healthy but I had never paid attention to the products I brought into my home right mm -hmm. um, and 
that was a huge aha moment for me. And so then that just kind of snowballed and I was introduced to doTERRA, which are the essential oils that I use, yeah. this beautiful community of women. Um, and then it just kind of went from there. And honestly, the majority of my education is, like I said at the beginning, is through my own experience. I've been really lucky to connect with some amazing, amazing women mm -hmm. of all different backgrounds, whether that's like in Ayurvedic medicine, whether that's in um, being a naturopathic doctor, whether that's a traditional doctor. Um, so I've built this community of women that I've been lucky enough to connect with um, to learn from but honestly the majority of my learning has been through my own experience and watching how they impacted my family and how removing toxic load in my life has impacted my own health on um, everything from hormones and our menstrual cycle and things along those lines so yeah, yeah. and, I, and I, it's a lifelong journey I don't know everything that's for sure mm. um, I continue to ask a ton of questions and I continue to just want to learn and implement it to my own life. And then if it's something that's worked amazing, then I want to talk about it and share it, right? Totally. So like, what, what would you recommend to our viewers or listeners? It's like a resource that you would use. It can be like completely topic related or it can be unrelated. That's like, you know, your favorite book or your favorite podcast that gives you this like really cool sense of this is awesome information I think everyone should listen to this or read this oh my gosh okay well <laughs> you said book and yes. I thought I had it right here maybe my dog oh I have I can't even show it to you since my phone is propped up oh like yes <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, give me one second yeah do it anyway this I mean going into what we were talking about periods, periods yeah anybody want to follow Claire Baker. She's pretty amazing. She is a huge advocate on this topic and her book is so good. Claire Baker. Um, yeah, because it's just, it's, it's a lot of what we talked about. It just goes into a little more detail, um, but it's so easy. This would be a really good book for anyone starting their period as well and their menstrual cycle. So for, for our younger generation as well. So, I mean, just off the top, I'm, I'm staring at it. So that got me thinking about that. I'm trying to pour in a ton of resources through my own kind of virtual hangout, which is my website. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm always, I'm at the phase right now where I'm just pouring in um, through my blog and um, offering lots of freebies. Yeah. So I actually do offer a free um, get started with tracking your cycle guide there's a little cheat sheet about what we talked about and then little journal prompts for each of your oh, phases perfect. so anybody that's watching is more than welcome to grab that as well it's completely free yeah um, and then there's lots of information over there on points and things like that so those yeah. would be some of the starting places and your podcast you i've been really <laughs> enjoying your podcast oh so. good it's pretty random but um i think like doing chats like this makes me realize you know exactly why I do this kind of work and sometimes I don't always know who or why I'm connecting with certain people and then they come on and it's like that instant bond and I've had it with almost everybody that's come on but I feel like this one in particular has made me just I feel like I almost just want to go on a complete route of going down the um I think just tracking the women's hormones and like really delving into that because I'm at that stage in my life where I'm just wanting to understand so much more and so it's going to be interesting to see how this podcast continues to evolve um but yeah sorry it did pause a little bit um yeah it'll just be interesting to see how I evolve through this podcast and I guess like when you do things like this, it, it brings more clarity to go, oh, I didn't find that interesting or wow, I really found that interesting. Like at the moment, I don't feel like my energy is at its peak. I feel like I'm, I don't know where I'd be in my cycle at the moment with that, but I feel completely lit up and I feel really driven by this conversation. So it's like, I know that that is hitting me at a point that I need to journal about, but like Sarah said, she, I'm, I'm including in the show notes all of the places to find this beautiful lady. Um, and she was saying that she's got all of these amazing free resources, which I'm going to jump on and be a part of as well. Um, so if you could just let them know where the best spot to find you is, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, or your website, or all of them, um, just so they know where they can contact you. 
For sure. I mean, on Instagram, absolutely. I am trying to get more out of my comfort zone. Lauren forced me today. <laughs> yes. <laughs> get on here. So, yeah, if you're on Instagram, so it's Sarah Catherine Blog, and it's Sarah with an H, Catherine with a C, Blog, and then you can also go over to sarahcatherineblog.com as well. And that's where all my freebies are and all those goodies. So, yeah. Perfect. Well, girl, I could honestly talk to you. Um, for a very, very long time, but I know that you've got precious little ones that you want to tuck in and that, you know, that quality time and that love is important in my life. And I can see it's very important in yours. So I'm going to give you a big squish, a virtual squish and a, a big thank you for turning up today and jumping out of your comfort zone. Um, because I've, I've gotten so much value out of this. And I know that there's been people um, typing in here as well that, you know, I can see they're excited. And, and for the people who rewatch it, I, I would love for people to comment or ask questions and we can keep that a little bit public too so we can see what questions are popping through. Thanks, Sarah. I would love that. Thank you so much. Let's keep in touch. It was so nice to connect with you. Totally. Bye, beauty. Appreciate you. Bye.